Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and we will be exceedingly glad in it because God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Happy Friday, everybody. And um, God is good. And uh, I'm excited. Uh, to share with you today. Uh, I'm excited about the teaching this weekend. Um, I'm just, I'm excited, man. Good to go. Feel renewed, feel stress, uh, stress-free. Got the, um, the squats out of the way this morning. Woo. Them squats and lunges. Lord, you need Jesus, my God. But Hey, it feels so amazing when you, you just get up and do what you know you need to do. And I'm telling you, I'm like an eagle, you know, just refreshing my, myself. And um, I just heard something just so amazing that a, an eagle goes through after living about 70 years. That's a long time, right? But the beak gets old and the claws get uh, worn out and the feathers get thick and they have to fly to the mountain. And... Um, they have to continue to hit their beak against the rocks until it falls out. And it's a 150 day process. And then their claws come back. And um, and so what happens is you've got to, you know, get rid of the old in order to pursue the better. And um, a lot of times God puts amazing messages within nature uh, to get rid of the old to, in order to, to, to get a hold of the better. And a lot of times we like to hold on to the old and still believe for the better. Uh, and so man, imagine 150 days of knocking that beak against the rock until it falls out. And then that causes the claws to grow. So you can go hunt again. And uh, I am telling you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that we're going for the better. I don't know what you have gone through and and uh, but it's time to to release the old so you can can grab hold of the better. Are you ready to release the old so you can get uh get a hold of the better? So yeah, that was just something that, um, was just on my heart and just wanted to share that with you. But I want to welcome you this morning. Welcome to the Grace Gang. And uh, so let's see, uh, where are you coming from this morning? Who's who's in the house? I mean, literally, every morning we're, we're inviting you into, into the house. So who's in the house with us this morning? Who's joining the Grace Gang? We release blessings to those of you in Griffith, Indiana. And South Bend is in the house with us this morning. South Africa in the house with us this morning. Cleveland, North Carolina. We welcome you guys. Send blessings to you. Uh, uh, Texas is in the house this morning. Nebraska is in the house this morning. Zambia is in the house this morning. Pencil, Pittsburgh in the house this morning. We, we say you guys are blessed and we release the blessings over your life. Uh, good morning, St. Louis, Lake Charles, Louisiana, Angola in the house with us this morning, Baltimore and Detroit. And Thomaston is in the house with us this morning. Welcome to the Grace Gang. And uh, I am just so excited and blessed to have you joining us here today. And I declare that all is well in, in, in the name of Jesus. Trinidad, Tobago in the house with us this morning. Uh, we welcome you guys. New Zealand is is here with us today. Welcome to the Grace Gang. Arkansas in the house. Nigeria in the house with us this morning. Russia in the house with us this morning. Uh, St. Lucius in the Caribbean. We welcome you guys and blessings to you. Dothan, Alabama, Detroit, Sacramento, the Netherlands in the house with us. We send blessings to you guys. Dominican Republic. Blessings to you guys, Canada, Saginaw, Dallas, Texas, the United Kingdom, Mississippi. Think about that. We go from Mississippi to the United Kingdom. Amen. Toronto, Bronx, World Changers Nation, uh, Pittsburgh, Selma, 
Birmingham. Welcome to the Grace Gang this morning. Praise God. Somebody said they have no cancer. They didn't get results. I, if you run that back over again, I missed that one. Um, Alberta is in the house. Uh, Jakarta, Indonesia is in the house with us today. Tampa, Florida, Shreveport in the house. Welcome to the Grace Gang. We send blessings to all of you in the mighty name of Jesus. God is so good. Atlanta, Marietta. Yeah. Welcome to the house. The ATL is joining us today. Katy, Texas, uh, across the pond in London. Welcome to the house. Uh, welcome to the Grace Gang. And Nassau, Bahamas, um, Nova Scotia, El Paso. Welcome. Happy Friday to you guys. We send blessings to you. Yes, yes, God is so good. He is so good. Praise him. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about what uh, what God is going to do for you. I, I'm telling you right now, we're releasing our faith. Something good's going to happen to you today. Don't let go of that. Something good's going to happen to you today. Praise God. And you just received that, you know, we're walking by faith and and um, we cannot be defeated because we already have the victory. How are you going to defeat somebody that's already won? And we have won. We have the victory because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all is well in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's get Psalms 91 equipped. And we're going to talk about some things that I believe will encourage you today. Repeat after me. I will dwell in the shelter of the most high God. I will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. You are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday, because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home. No evil can befall me. No plague can come near my dwelling. God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. Because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears. He will honor me with his presence and power. He will reward me with long life. And he will show me his salvation. I declare that I am Psalms 91 equipped and all is well with me in my house in Jesus name. And everybody that agrees said what? Amen and amen and amen. Wow. So this is really awesome. Um, what we're getting ready to talk about. And I think it's going to really uh, challenge you. Uh, I want I want you to think about something you've heard. Uh, many people use the word legalism. What does that mean? It doesn't appear in the Bible. Legalism is not a word found in the Bible, but the concept of legalism certainly is. It, it's kind of similar to um, the word rapture is not found in the Bible, but the concept to be caught up or to caught away is in, in the Bible. So, um, the whole motivation behind um, the Apostle Paul and his letter to the Galatians 
was over this issue of legalism. So I wouldn't dare continue without, first of all, defining what it is. What is legalism? Well, let's give a definition to it. First of all, uh, legalism is the doctrine that salvation is gained through good works. It's the doctrine or the it, it's the teaching that salvation is gained through good works. In other words, if you're good enough, then you'll be saved. And we know that salvation is a gift from God that we receive by faith. But the legalism or to, to, to be legalistic based on what you had to do to have be successful under the law, it says you got to do this. You got to do a good work in order to be saved. No. You're saved by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It also means the judging of conduct in terms of adherence to precise laws. Basically the same thing, that your, your conduct is judged good or bad based on you keeping the law. Legalism. And what happens is the dictionary's definition, it fits very well with Paul's definition. And it's this, what was going on in the churches in Galatia is really going to give you the concept behind legalism. Now, I want you to think about something. Legalism focuses on God's law more than the relationship with God. So you even have to be careful, you know, as a, as a, um, as you live the grace life, are you focusing more on God's law more than relationship with God? And, 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 and legalistic people focus more on what you got to do to get what God has already given you. And they, and there's no relationship with God. So don't ever forget that. That really helped me that legalism focuses on God's law more than the relationship with God. Um, in other words, it's like, you know, keep eternal law without, a submitted heart keep the eternal law without a submitted heart and so this is so important the woman caught in an adultery you know they cared more about the law <clears throat> and the fact that she broke the law than they cared about the woman and so it's important that we understand how this whole thing works now galatians chapter one get this galatians chapter one Verse six through seven. I'm going to read out of the NIV. Uh, let's start this today. I think this will really, really bless you. Galatians chapter one, verse six through seven. Here's what he says. He says, I am astonished. This is Paul speaking. That you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ. And now you're turning to a different gospel, which is really not a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ or the gospel of grace. Now, this is so interesting because Paul said, I, I've got to write this because there's some con confusion that some people are trying to pervert the gospel of, of grace or the gospel of Christ. So now here's the question that came, came to mind. What perverts the gospel of grace? What perverts the gospel of Christ? You see, they were being taught a different gospel. But what about it was different? What is it that these guys were teaching people who had already gotten born again and made a decision to live the grace life. What were they teaching? They had been taught that something in addition to the gospel was required in order to be saved. That it just wasn't enough for you to believe God to be saved, but now you, 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 you need to do this in order to be saved. And so we find out in chapter five in Galatians that this additional requirement that they were talking about was circumcision. And they were saying, it's not enough for you to believe, but you got to be circumcised too. And Paul was like, I got to address this. So he addresses this in Galatians chapter five, 
and verse two through four. Now listen to this again. I'm going to stay with NIV. All right. So here's what he said. Verse two. He said, mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Wow. He's like, you know, the value Christ has is that he's delivered you from all the things you had to do from the law. But if you decide to go get circumcised to be saved, then Christ doesn't have any value to you. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. In other words, James chapter 210 says, if you offend in one area, if, if, if you want, if you desire to to keep the whole law and you offend in one point, then you're guilty of the whole thing. And so he says in, in verse four, you are trying to be justified or righteous by the law. He says, you who are trying to be justified by the law have, have, have been alienated from Christ. You're distant from Christ and you have fallen from grace. So to fall from grace means to fall back into adding performance as a qualification to get what God promised. Wow. Now, there's a passage in the book of Acts that I, that I thought about here, and I'm going to pull this all together. Are y'all still on the bus with me? I'm going to pull this all together because uh, in Acts chapter 15, I'm going to read verse 1 and verse 5. Acts chapter 15, verse 1 and verse 5. Verse 1 says, certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers. All right. Those who believed and, 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 and received Jesus and they're under the grace of God. They're living the grace life. And here's what it says. He says, unless and here's what they taught. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. Well, nobody was saved when Moses was around. And now all of a sudden you're coming to teach people, if you're not circumcised, you can't be saved. Not understanding that under the grace of God, we're circumcised in our heart. We don't need to do that act anymore. We believe Jesus Christ. And then verse five says, then some of the believers who belong to the party of the Pharisees stood up and they said, the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. Now listen to me carefully, because that was interesting. They were, they were really, I got to give them a, I have to give them a hand because they, at least they got together and, and, and had the discussion. Now, like these people in the passage from Acts, somebody was going around upsetting the faith of the Gentile Christians, and they were falsely telling them that in addition to believing the gospel of Christ, the gospel of grace, they must also be circumcised and keep the law of Moses in order to be saved. And, and, and under the gospel of grace, it's, it's if you believe, if you believe. But the perversion of the law, the perversion of this is you got to believe and perform. So Paul quite clearly tells them that that to comply with this false teaching that you have to be circumcised and believe in order to be saved would cause them to be severed or cut away from severed from Christ and cut off from the grace of God oh my goodness it was a spiritual death sentence Wow, that's what legalism, that's what legalism done. So why is this the result? Paul said that you can't just keep one part of the law in an attempt to be saved. He said it's a package deal. Keeping one part of the law means you have to keep it all, according to James 2 and 10. Since no one is able to perfectly obey the law, then anyone who abandons grace in favor of the law will be lost. Did you get that? Let me say that again. Since no one is able to perfectly obey the law, 
All right. You can see that in Galatians 2, 16. No one is able to perfectly obey the law. Did y'all hear what I just said? Nobody is able to perfectly obey the law. So since nobody can perfectly obey the law, then anyone who abandons grace in favor of the law will be lost. Wow. And so we, we read this. Uh, if you look at Galatians 2.16, uh, in NIV, I pick it up here. He says, a person is not justified by the works of the law. They're justified by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. So I'm righteous by my faith in Jesus Christ, not by my works of the law, because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. No one will be justified. See, the addition of even one condition to the gospel is enough to change it into something that, that, that would be powerless to save. So in teaching that circumcision was required, the Galatians were being sold the lie that they must work to obtain and to maintain their salvation. Paul says that grace and works are complete opposites. Salvation is not sustained by a mixture of grace and works. It is one or the other. And that's how legalism comes into play. And ladies and gentlemen, it's so important that we understand that legalism is that teaching that salvation is gained through works and it's not. It's, it's, uh, it's legalism focusing on God's law more than on the relationship with God and you believe in God. I thought that was pretty important for, for me to say to you and for you to be able to hear this because, you know, practically how, how does this relate? You're, you're going to have to understand that if you have believed in Jesus Christ and you say, I make you my Lord, I believe that you died, that you were resurrected from the dead. I, be I believe that my sins are forgiving, forgiven. That is enough for you to be saved. But still there's this thing hanging around church that says, no, you can't you, you, your your behavior determines your salvation. No, you don't understand. I believe in Jesus and Jesus is going to change my desires and my behavior is going to change because my believing is right. Right. Believing the, the equals it equals right living. The consequences of believing right will be right living. But we keep trying to put the doing before the believing. And it becomes legalistic because you're focusing more on doing the law rather than believing your savior, believing what Jesus has already done. And I know sometimes it feels weird. It feels convicting. It even even you, you just feel some kind of way. But you have to be confident in I believe Jesus. I am saved. Versus, well, I have not done enough good works. Oh, I hadn't been back in, in during the time of Galatians. I hadn't been circumcised in the flesh, so I can't be saved until I'm circumcised in the flesh. As long as we keep pushing, you know, something we got to do. And, and here's the type thing. Anytime you add performance to to the grace of God, you are separated from the grace of God. Any. You separate yourself from from un, this unmerited favor. It's like God can rock and roll in your life, and and you you keep messing it up because you just feel like you got to do something to deserve it. And what do you call it when a person continues to try to do something good to deserve something good from God? Here's what you call it: dead works. That's what you call it. And 
uh, people, you know, uh, you know, I, I understand this. I God told me this before I start teaching this. Uh, and I think I sh share it with you guys. I think it was on Tuesday. Scandalous grace. This is outrageous to some people. But at the same time, folks, you guys have got to understand. I, I don't want to be severed from the grace of God because I keep trying to add, you know, what I have to do. And and Paul, Paul got Paul rebuked. I think it was uh, Peter. It's like, dude, you guys are still going around trying to add the law to grace. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's a serious thing. And it's serious for us to talk about. It's serious for me to repeat it over and over again. It's serious, serious for you to hear it over and over again. Because the more you hear this kind of stuff, the more you start walking in it, the more you start functioning in it and, and things start working the way they need to work in your life. Um, this is awesome. And you're awesome. And I just declare that in the name of Jesus, somebody just said it perfectly right. We can't live by mixtures. Uh, we can't live by mixtures. Uh, and, and then when I started off with the eagle, you know, uh, plucking off the old so that the better can be available. Uh, some people need to do like the eagle and go to a mountain and, and hit your beak against the stone until it falls off. And then you can walk in the better. And, I, and I'm telling you, man, um, you got to be determined. I'm not I'm not going back. I'm not going back to mixtures. I'm not going to, you know, uh, you remember this one? Um, we're nothing but sinners saved by grace. Then that sound like a mixture. It is. I mean, which one are you? Sinner or saved? You know, I'm, I'm not a sinner. I will never refer to myself as a sinner again since I've been born again. And the Bible in the New Testament says that we are saints. Uh I'm not a sinner. OK, no, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect either, but I'm not a sinner. You know, no, I have a new creation on the inside of me. And um, God's changing my desires to do what pleases him. And I'm 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 on the journey. And the promise is uh, Jesus before he when he comes back, he will complete the work in me. And um, yeah. And, and this is. You know, you know, you can't take new wine, put it in old wine skin because it'll burst and you will lose both of them. And that's the danger in living by mixtures. You, you, nothing going to happen. I think that's what happens in the church. You're trying to believe God uh, with mixtures. You're trying to believe God and do do the work of God yourself. And, and you got to learn how to be still in the confidence that his grace is is enough because when you keep adding to it you're just saying it's not enough it's not enough that believing god's not enough i i gotta i gotta do this believing god's not enough i gotta do that believing god, god. no your doing is born out of your right believing and, and because you're not you're not doing it to, to 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 get a gift the gift's already been done it's 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 finished and so you're not doing it to do that it's already been given and yeah, man. So I, I'm finding that teaching the gospel means that I have to say things over and over and over again, over and over and over again. Just keep saying it over and over and over again. And because I want to be patient with people, because you've got to reconcile all that stuff in your head that legalism has taught. And you got to reconcile that and say, whoa, 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 whoa. I see why Paul had to show up with some strong rebukes from these people that would go behind his back after he'd go in and he'd teach the gospel and they received the gospel. And Paul's like, man, I am shocked that you're, you're so quick to leave the gospel of Christ and try to attach yourself to something that's not even the gospel. And uh, I see that today. We still want to mix it. Why? Because that's what we've always heard. That, well, I always heard it like this. Ooh, there are lots of things that I am reconciling in my doctrine. I'm, I'm reconciling in my thinking and I'm reconciling in my life. And um, it, it's challenging and it's going to cause you maybe to lose some relationships. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Hopefully they, they grab a hole and y'all walk down that path together. But Nah, bro. I, I'm 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 not going back there. I want the gospel of grace, and I want this New Testament to infiltrate every thought, every 
thing I've ever thought I knew and, and the way that I live. And, and that, um, you know, it takes time. Absolutely. But it also takes people that just keep just running it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm telling you, listen to me one day, you're going to look up and people will have gotten this message. And this is what you're going to be hearing. You're going to hear more of this gospel of grace being preached and less of the tradition. I mean, because it's Jesus. It's Jesus we're talking about. It's Jesus. I don't want to ever stand up in a pulpit and I talk about Jesus. Yeah, uh, it's Jesus. And, 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 and grace is not a doctrine. Only it is not a curriculum. Grace is a person. Jesus full of grace and truth wrapped himself up in the word and delivered grace and truth to us. What a gift, what a gift. And so, um, yeah, man, I, I, I that's what, that was, what, that was on my heart to share with you today. I, I think I'm going to kind of continue in this and show you why adding works, uh, to what, to, to belief and, and the grace of God works with grace. Why, why is that such a conflict? And I, I'll show you. I mean, as soon as you add works and try to be justified by your works, you have fallen from grace. You have severed. I like that word, severed yourself from the grace of God. And so let's let's be uh, conscious of that. Hey, guys, we got an amazing weekend coming up. Uh, and I want you to be a part of that. It's going to be amazing. Listen, we've got, and I want to thank you guys. We, uh, where is it at? We have registered for the Grace Life Conference, uh, 4,383. Come on, guys. Let's do that. Come on. Let's go and get it done. Get it done. So it, it's, it's, it's this easy. It's like, okay, are you coming? You're like, oh, yes. Register. <laughs> That's always saying, are you, you plan on, you plan on coming? Yes, sir. I wouldn't miss it. That's what you said last year. You're like, hey, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm going to be there every year. OK, if, if that's the truth, go ahead and register versus, well, I'm going to try. You know, that's an honest lie, right? You already know that's an honest lie. Let's go ahead and get the registration in. I got some things on my heart I want to do, but I need to know if you're planning on coming so that I can go ahead and make the reservations to get these things done. So. Grace Life, 2024, July the 11th through the 13th. Uh, if you're on StreamYard with me, you see a little banner down there. You know, you can register by texting Grace Life to 51555. You can call a number. You can go to, to the website, creflodollarministries.org. You can register there. Let's go ahead and get registered, please. It's the reunion. And it is going to be amazing. We're literally going to show you how to live the grace life. And that's, you know, you're talking about breaking down the practicality of it, showing you how to live the grace life and to see your life restored with peace, to see your emotions impacted tremendously. I mean, if you suffer with rejection, insecurity, this 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 conference is going to almost be like therapy for some. And you're going to walk away free from the shame, free from the condemnation. There is something so powerful about hearing Grace Life. And also tonight, we're gonna, we got something real special. Are you dealing with health issues? Uh, we got a health and fitness, health and wellness conference tonight uh, on the campus of World Changes Church International at 7 o'clock. And so you can register now by texting WCCI Health. That's one word, WCCI Health to 51555. If you're in the area, you might want to come. It's going to be a blessing health and wellness conference. And I like to do this because we need to take authority over our health. We need to take the lead over our health. And you need to understand some very practical things that you can understand. And it's not just treating the symptoms, but it's an overall wholeness approach uh, that's going to help you to stay around here and, 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 and defeat cancer and all that stuff. So health and wellness conference tonight, seven o'clock. Join me and uh, the physicians, doctors and um, all the good folks at uh, Zoe Wellness. It's going to be a blessing. You're going to learn some stuff. There's a lot of uh, uh, new understanding about how to defeat certain things in your area. 
certain breakthrough combinations put together on on how to eat things and and literally get get what you need from foods it's going to be an amazing time and i invite you to join us tonight uh in the name of jesus if you're out of town i believe it's going to be streamed uh and i and it may also be on the word network if you are um you know you have access to that so anyway if you come you'll be able to ask questions and really engage in that conversation and and get some things that you need and also take advantage of some surprises that um zoe wellness has for those who actually show up in person so it's going to be a blessing hey guys we love you we thank god for you we're not living in legalism we're going to live by the grace of god you have an amazing weekend i'll see some of you tonight in the name of jesus bye bye everybody